NerdErotic.com. I know I promised the Terminator Dark Flop trilogy, but consider this an epilogue. And my very first Scott Mendelson from Forbes article. Our friend Scott has had some form of an awakening, and that's a good thing, but he still manages to find a way to blame Terminator Dark Fate's failures partially on the fans. But before I get started, if you like what I do here, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps independent creators like yours truly compete against the major corporations, which YouTube has decided to prioritize here on this platform. If you could like and share the videos as well, I would appreciate it, and I bet your favorite YouTuber would appreciate it. And now I'm not going to go over this entire article because not a lot of it talks about Terminator Dark Fate, so we're going to stick to that to save you and me some time. But did you know it is your fault that Terminator Dark Fate failed? And it's your fault that other films have failed that have tried to be inclusive. And of course, we're not going to mention the partisan politics that come along with that that alienates half your fan base. No, it's simply your fault for not being as enlightened as Scott Mendelson and people who live by water. Terminator Dark Fate sadly shows diversity only matters for movies audiences already want to see. Now that is a head-scratcher of a headline. Dark Fate applied the Force Awakens formula to Terminator, and its failure shows the cruel limits of on-screen diversity as the financial boost. I'm right there with you, Scott. It's almost like there's a bunch of people writing blogs that they call articles, calling themselves journalists when they're bloggers, and they're just virtue signaling. And the same thing is happening on Twitter, Facebook, and here on YouTube. And it's almost like Hollywood is marketing to those people thinking that they actually buy any of this stuff. Before I get too ahead of myself, let's follow Scotty Mendelson's Access Media Logic. Two of the biggest movies dropping on DVD slash Blu-ray and price to rent VOD today are Warner Brothers and New Line Cinema's The Kitchen and Universal's Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. The former is, in a nutshell, everything we claim to want as a result of a push for on-screen diversity. Well, not forced diversity. I think everybody is for inclusivity and diversity in a natural and organic way, which means, hey, let's just write a story, include some characters, make them diverse, not really talk about it. I think Hollywood was definitely heading in the right direction, but I think a lot of things came with partisan politics, and it's never been about that. But again, I'm going to Hold, I'm going to hold my judgment and let's see what he thinks. It's mid-budget $38 million R-rated adult skewing mob drama starring Melissa McCarthy. I'm not sure how diverse Melissa McCarthy is. Tiffany Haddish and Elizabeth Moss from a major studio and courtesy of a first-time female director in Andrea Burloff. Maybe you just want to consider it was a bad movie. Are we supposed to go to see these movies just because they're diverse? I'm sure that's what Hollywood thinks. And it's backfiring and it upsets the access media because they were such willing partners in something that wasn't real. Yet partially thanks to mixed negative reviews and frankly, I thought it was a fine piece of B movie, three star Hollywood movie making. The film earned just $16 million worldwide. Meanwhile, David Light is Hobbs and Shaw starred Dwayne Johnson, Jason Statham, Vanessa Kirby, and Idris Alba in a blustery and over-the-top actioneer that grossed $758 million worldwide, still the year's biggest non-Disney slash comic book flick of the year. Well, shame on them. Don't know what the hell this has to do with Dark Fate, but let's continue on. The extreme success, relatively speaking, of the actioneer and the extreme failure of the crime flick highlights a grim point. Please, please get there. One that plays into the sadly predictable box office failure of Terminator Dark Fate. Audiences may claim to want on-screen and off-screen inclusivity. Oh, here we go. Perhaps the online conversation disproportionately speaks for the general populace. Shh, don't tell Scotty. Santa Claus isn't real and the world is not Twitter. But simply put, while on-screen diversity and off-screen inclusivity can be a potent added value element in a film audiences already want to see, it will not persuade moviegoers to show up in theaters for a film in which they otherwise have little interest. So what you're saying is diversity and inclusivity isn't a selling point. You need to actually make 
a good film. For some reason, I'm getting flashbacks of potty training my kid and that rewarding feeling when he stands up and pees in the toilet and aims right for the first time feels like Scotty's waking up to something. It's a cruel truth that has revealed itself over the last few years, especially as Hollywood has finally gotten its head out of its butt. Well, it got its head out of its butt, but it's got to get a lot of other things out of its butt as well and started offering on the semi-regular old school studio programmers that happen to feature diverse casts and slightly more behind the scenes inclusivity, which nobody has a problem with and it has nothing to do with Dark Fate's failure. I've gone over that pretty well in my last three videos, why it failed. It wasn't about the inclusivity or the diversity. It never has been. It's about the politics that come with it. I've said it over and over again. The intersectional feminism, the ham-fisted messaging that is all over this film. That alienated a lot of people prior to them even seeing it, and they weren't wrong about it because it was there. And I will give you examples at the end of the video. The rest of his article goes over the injustices done by Hollywood, not the fans, by giving white actors chance after chance after they failed. And that's something I've said for quite some time on this channel. We, the fans, weren't the ones making creative decisions. We're not the ones purposely putting partisan politics in these films. And we're not the ones complaining about diversity. We're complaining about the politics. And so we're going to jump to the last two paragraphs. I will, in fairness to Scotty, leave the link to this article in the description. In 2018, the same audiences were excited for Chadwick Boseman's Black Panther. That's the first time I've ever heard it called that, but uh, I would call it Michonne's Black Panther. Mostly ignored Jonathan Boyega's Pacific Rim Uprising. There are plenty of valid reasons for that. Primary, Guillermo del Toro not directing the second film. But it was still a refreshing case of a big-budget, overseas-friendly franchise flick that just happened to star a black man, which was ignored alongside a big movie that, by design, had to feature a minority-centric audience. That is a very interesting way of looking at it. Bringing this back to Terminator Dark Fate, thank you. James Cameron, by the way, again, there was four paragraphs stating that white guys got more chances than everybody else. And I think we pretty much know that. But whose fault is that? Well, it's Hollywood's, not the audience's. But here we go. Terminator Dark Fate, James Cameron and friends thought they had their Star Wars The Force Awakens, but they had... Pacific Rim Uprising. The former was a much-anticipated sequel to a still-popular franchise featuring young and comparatively diverse heroes as an added value element. Well, that didn't play out very well, did it? Dark Fate was like Pacific Rim 2, I will agree with this, an unrequested sequel to an unsuccessful franchise starter that just happened to feature not a white guy leads. And if you haven't figured it out yet, which I'm sure you have, Scott Mendelson in this article is conceding one thing, that superficial diversity doesn't work, while not acknowledging the agenda in this film at all. Audiences remembered that they either didn't care about or didn't enjoy Terminator Salvation and Terminator Gynesis. And the reviews for Dark Fate, while comparatively positive, weren't so superlative as to justify a third chance. That the film starred Linda Hamilton, Mackenzie Davis, Natalia Reyes, and Gabriel Luna was a nice bonus, but not one that enticed folks to see a movie for which they already had little interest. Thank you, Scott. The on-screen diversity of Hobbs and Shaw, Aladdin, and Star Wars The Force Awakens was a bonus that encouraged folks to show up for a big movie that they were already going to see. I don't think it encouraged anybody with Star Wars, Aladdin, or Hobbs and Shaw because people don't see the world like that, like my good friend Jeremy points out a lot. When you walk into an In-N-Out or McDonald's, you don't look and see the staff and see, well, there's not enough representation in this place. I'm not going to shop here. Nobody cares. The point of those successes was that ethnically diverse casts don't hurt overseas, which ran 
contrary to 20 years of conventional wisdom by Hollywood. It was also it also didn't help Terminator Dark Fate, Pacific Rim Uprising and The Kitchen because the audiences didn't want to see those movies. Scotty's very long-winded article is basically saying diversity doesn't help or hurt a film and I guess he's just coming to this realization. That is part of normalization and that is a good thing. What isn't a good thing is the access media weaponizing that diversity against critics of say The Last Jedi Jedi or Star Trek Discovery or Doctor Who, which they have done quite a bit. It also doesn't help that the critics and the access media are afraid to criticize these films and TV shows based on only diversity. Now, for those of you who didn't think there was any agenda in Terminator Dark Fate, allow me to present the Mary Sue's perspective on this because they think there was agenda in there and I will use them as an example. In Terminator Dark Fate, we went there. A feminist interpretation of Terminator Dark Fate. Hasta la vista, man, babies. And I know it's low-hanging fruit, but sometimes you gotta pick it. Okay, first things first, I need to be upfront and say that Terminator Dark Fate is not a very good movie. In fact, it's actually pretty bad. After viewing it, my friend pointed out that with each new failed attempt to reboot the franchise, Dark Fate was supposed to be the start of a new trilogy. That Terminator now has, in fact, a trilogy of failed reboots, which is a very good point. I'm not going to argue with the Mary Sue on this one. A broken clock is right twice a day. The three women are diverse in age. Ethnicity? There were two white women there. And appearance. I really can't tell you how exciting it was for me to see a young Latina woman, a tall shout out to my fellow tall woman, androgynous woman, and a woman in her 60s, late 60s, with little to no plastic surgery, fighting together and kicking robot ass. It was very believable. That sort of representation is still hard to find, but especially in the action genre. Now, I must point out that two of the three leads are white, so it's not as ethnically diverse as it could be, but I think the way their whiteness and privilege come into play later in the film and the way that they use it is important to acknowledge. Grace uses her whiteness and the uniform of a border patrol agent to free Danny from a detention center. Sarah uses her military connections, her closeness to the systems of power, to acquire a weapon capable of stopping the Rev-9. I think the people at the Mary Sue were once legitimate geeks who took women's studies courses and now they hate genre and comic books and film and they haven't quite come to terms with it. But Hollywood keeps making movies for them. Terminator Dark Fate is for the Mary Sue and they still didn't like it and I know this is cringe. But wait, there's more. And it isn't until they meet Carl Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator turned ally. And there is another example that I won't even go over because it's a pretty dark subject that I don't want to make light of even in jest in this video, but it is part of the agenda that the Mary Sue points out. And I didn't even realize why they picked the profession of a draper for Carl's Terminator until now. And I will let your imagination do the rest. Again, it's very dark. Scott Mendelson does make a couple of good points in his article. Selling inclusivity and diversity on a superficial level will never work. The audience is not at fault for that. It's not the unenlightened masses like the access media and Hollywood think. It's individuals who can see through your BS. As you pointed out, Scott Mendelson, nobody wanted a Terminator sequel anyway. And nobody, and I mean nobody wanted a Terminator sequel that prioritized agenda over good storytelling and whatever chance this film did have got shot to hell by James Cameron and Tim Miller's decisions. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Nerderotic.com, please subscribe.